Hi everyone, so let's now take a look at the second of three lessons that we've got on these different types of payment methods. Okay, so we're going to start up with the direct debit payment. Now when it comes to a direct debit payment, this is an agreement with a bank to allow a third party to withdraw funds from your own bank account. So this is where you are giving permission to uh, mobile phone companies, gas companies, electricity companies, uh, broadband companies and so on, as well as possibly uh, your mortgage or loan company that you've actually taken out a mortgage or loan with, uh, to actually withdraw money from your bank account. Now this can be very, very convenient. Uh, it can ensure that you don't forget to actually make payments. That could be good news and help to maintain your credit rating. It's also very easy to set up. Now, this point, however, well, there's, there's two sides to this. Firstly, it's an advantage because the amounts can vary. So it means that if you spend a couple of quid extra on your uh, mobile phone for data or something, that's easily paid for. Uh, but... We can see with those varying amounts, if you went on holiday abroad uh, and perhaps you went wild on the data that you were consuming overseas and the phone calls you were making, then this can become a, uh, a real downside and make budgeting tricky. Uh, not only that, but we can also see that uh, if the company that's withdrawing funds from your bank account makes a mistake and overcharges you, then, well, that's going to be down to you to actually sort it out and really pester them to ensure you get the money back. Okay, so, yeah, it's an interesting one. Now, standing orders similar, but it is different because here we can see the amount can vary, but here we've got a fixed amount, okay? So an agreement made with a bank allowing the transfer of a regular fixed sum of money. So this could be useful when it comes to actually uh, sorting out rent. Okay, so if you are in rented premises, you may sort out a standing order, which pays perhaps £500 per month on the uh, 28th of each month. Something like that, okay? Uh, again, it's convenient, it's easy to set up, uh, but it's always going to be the same amount that's paid. And that can, of course, help your budgeting. So um, that, that can be quite useful to know exactly how much is going to leave your bank account. Uh, and it's also easy to cancel, as are direct debits as well. Okay, uh, so amounts will be paid, however. So you've got to make sure that you've got enough money in your bank account to actually uh, pay that money because otherwise you might uh, be forced into an unauthorized overdraft and that can be pretty expensive. Okay, next up, let's have a look at a prepaid card there. So a prepaid card, a card which allows money to be uploaded uh, to it and payments deducted as you actually uh, buy goods and services. Uh, now this is really useful because you are actually uh, dedicating a set amount to upload onto your card and that can be useful for budgeting. So if perhaps you put £100 on to last year over the course of the next 10 days, 14 days, whatever, uh, you can set a budget nice and easily. Okay, And that prevents overspending of course. Uh, the downsides are, are however that you're likely to have to pay an initial setup fee to actually access that card and there's no protection um, if you actually lose the card. So it's not like you can just cancel it. Your money has been uploaded specifically to that card. Okay, let's take a look at uh, contactless cards then. Uh, so contactless cards, I'm sure you guys have used contactless cards. This is where, of course, money is transferred um, when the card is touched on the contactless point. Uh, so this is really popular, it's convenient, I love the time saving aspect of it, that it, it's just so quick uh, and it's secure of course as well. So that's, that's another uh, real bonus of using this method, uh, but it's generally for smaller transactions from 5 to 50 pounds perhaps. Uh, okay, and it's not fully widespread, so some more independent stores may not have contactless uh, card technology okay uh, right final point mobile banking 
Uh, right, so you, uh, with your bank account, you will get a mobile uh, banking connection in all likelihood, and that, that can be very, very useful. Things like checking your balance, making payments, uh, and just uh, checking out your finances and making sure you're on top of things. So here we've got the ability to conduct financial transactions on mobile platforms. Uh, it's secure, it's convenient. The downsides though, well, it's not really a full banking service. Uh, so for instance, if you were given a check, what can you do with it when it comes to mobile banking? Well, not a great deal. You would need to go into a branch or post it off if your bank offers that service. Uh, so it's not a full service that you actually get on mobile banking. Right, uh, remember to actually uh, have a go at actually just redrawing these, retesting yourself on these. Try to remember these different definitions, uh, the respective advantages, disadvantages we've got here. Uh, really important to test yourself as you go through this unit uh, because otherwise you leave yourself a lot to do at the end. Okay, thanks.